What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpPresentials.com back with another SketchUp and Profile Builder tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to toy around with the idea of creating parking spaces and parking lines using Profile Builder's assemblies. Um, if you're looking for more information about Profile Builder, you can check that out at the SketchUpPresentials.com slash Profile Builder. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so part of the reason I wanted to do this is because uh, some of you may have seen I started a series on creating a city inside of SketchUp, and I'm looking for an easy way to add parking spaces um, to an area kind of like this one. And honestly, I'm not 100% sure if this will work or not because I put that on terrain, but we can go ahead and test the idea here and it'll still be valuable even if it doesn't work there. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to start off and I want to load up Profile Builder. And within Profile Builder, if you remember, there's two different kinds of options. There's options for um, profiles, and there's options for assemblies. If you remember, profiles are the things that get extruded along paths. Assemblies are things that take the profiles that are extruded along paths and combine them with repeating objects like parking space lines um, in order to create like full-on assemblies. And so we're going to start off, and what we're going to do is um, let's start by just creating parking along this in line over here. And so that's going to be fairly simple. All we're going to want to do is we're just going to want to create a parking stripe. And so to start off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to group this object just so that it's um, not going to merge with anything else that I create. And I'm going to go ahead and paint that with like the asphalt new material. So I'm going to paint that with an asphalt material. And so what I want to start with is I want to create a simple assembly for my parking space lines. And so my parking space line. I'm going to draw this. I assume your parking space is probably going to be about 18 feet deep by let's say it's four inches wide. Um, so it's going to look kind of like this and that's what the line is going to look like. And so I'm going to go ahead and reverse the face on this. I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to make it a component. And we're just going to call this something like parking line. It doesn't really need to be anything special. And so we're going to start off and we're going to create our first assembly. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give this just a bit of thickness. And I know in real life your parking lines don't have any thickness, but um, for something like this you're going to want to give it just a bit of thickness just so it rises up above this face. Otherwise you get what's called Z-fighting. Z-fighting is what occurs when two faces occupy the same spot in a 3D space and the engine is struggling to figure out which one it should be displaying. So it kind of flashes back and forth like this. However, if you double click in here and you give this just a bit of thickness, like not so much that it's going to affect your realism, maybe like an eighth of an inch or something like that, well now this parking line doesn't occupy the same space anymore, at least above um, above the ground plane. And it does occupy it from below, but I don't really care about that because we're not going to be looking at this from below. And so what we've done is we've started off and we've created one parking line. Well now what I want to do is I want to create an assembly where these parking lines are repeated. And so in order to do that we're going to go into the assembly dialog. That's just going to be the second option right here. When I click on that um, we're just going to click the button for new assembly or the plus button and we're just going to name this parking spaces nine feet wide. So just a name that we can kind of recognize this by. And what we're going to do is we don't want to add a component to this one, or we don't want to add a profile member to this one, we just want to repeat our component. So we're going to click on this tab for component, and we're going to start off by clicking the plus button for add component. So when we do that, you're going to have to find your component in your model. And in order to do that, just click the button for pick from model, and then we can just select our line. And so what I like to do once I do this is I like to go ahead and draw a copy of the assembly just using the build assembly function right here just so I can see what that's going to look like. And you can see how to start off we have kind of a problem. And we have a problem in the sense that these, um, these um, repeating objects aren't facing the right direction because what we want is we want them to repeat every eight or nine feet. And so what we're going to do in this case is we're going to go into our um, 
into our assembly dialog and go down to rotation and we're going to rotate this 90 degrees and you can see how in the preview pane right here these now rotate 90 degrees and the other thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to set our spacing so I'm going to select this option for spacing and I'm just going to type in 9 foot and then I'll just hit tab to get out of that box well now we've adjusted this so that these objects are going to be placed every nine feet at a 90 degree angle. So now I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to select this and then I'm going to click on the button for apply assembly attributes and what that's going to do is that's going to come in here and that's going to apply those attributes that we just changed inside of this um, inside of this assembly. And so one thing we could do if we really wanted to is we could come in here and we could adjust the rotation of these to like 180 degrees or um, 270 degrees. That way they're gonna be facing the correct direction. So you can adjust that just using the rotation here. So you can see how that's an easy way to start off adding these parking lines inside your model. And so once you get this figured out, there's a lot of interesting things you could do. Like if you had a path that you wanted these to go along, you could select the path and run this this way. You do have to be a little bit careful um, when you do that. You might have to edit some junctions in here, which um, if you guys are interested in, I can talk about. I'm not going to worry about it too much for right now. Um, so you can see how that's an easy way to just create these parking lines running along this face. Now we've got an assembly that we can use in here to quickly add some parking spaces to our model. So you can see how these spaces are in here. And um, so these look good, but let's say that we wanted to come in here and we wanted to create some central parking spaces as well. So what we could do in order to do that is I'm going to find the center of this line and I'm gonna add, first of all, I'm gonna break this up by about 20 feet, um, just because I wanna leave kind of a parking drive on the edge here. But we wanna create another assembly that's gonna do something very similar to this, but it's gonna use a profile as well. And so it's gonna be a little bit important that we know kind of the size of the face on the front side of this, um, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that and we're gonna extrude that. Um, so what I want to do is I want to take this assembly and I want to modify it. So right now I have this assembly in here. I'm just going to select that assembly and I'm going to, once I've selected that assembly, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to rename this. So this one I'm going to name parking spaces dash double dash nine feet. And so we're going to create a new profile in here. And so the first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and build a sample assembly in here. So we're just going to click on the build assembly button. We're going to click in here. And we're going to add these parking spaces right here. And so there's a couple different ways you could approach this. You could either set this up where your component gets longer. So it gets the full length of two spaces in here or you could just add another component. So that's what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a component and for my second component, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select my parking line again. And so when I do that, now I have two different components in here. You can see them both as I move this back and forth. And so what I wanna do in this case is I wanna to go to my second component and for my second component, I wanna adjust my left right offset to 18 feet. And if you remember, 18 feet was gonna be the, uh, is the, the length of one space. So when I tell this to offset that second component by 18 feet, that means now if I come in here and I apply those new attributes, you can see how what that's gonna do is that's gonna add this to this other side. So now I have the two repeating lines right here for my parking lines. But the one thing I wanna be aware of when I do this is I also want to be aware of the direction that it's going. So like right now, for example, I don't want this to show up over here. I want this to show up offset from the center line. So instead of 18 feet, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to change that left right offset to negative 18 feet. And then when I apply my assembly attributes, what that's going to do is that's going to offset that instead of going from here to here with my offset, it's going from here to here. So you can see how now it's applying both parking spaces worth of spaces um, based on that
new offset distance. And so now what we need to do is we need to add a profile that's going to get extruded along here. And so in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just draw a copy of the profile. And probably the easiest way to do that is going to be to just draw it on this face. And then we can kind of move it off to the side. And then I can use the rotate tool. I believe these need to be laying down. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay that down. And so I'm going to reverse the faces. And so we're good to go. So now I have a flat profile in here that I can use to extrude this along or to extrude along this path. And so in order to add our profile, we need to go into the profile dialog. So when I go into the profile dialog, that's going to give me the option to select or to add a new profile. So, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this profile and I'm just gonna click the plus button. And um, it's gonna ask what the name of our new profile is gonna be. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna call this parking stripe. I'm gonna click okay. What that's gonna do is that's gonna show up just like this. And now, if I was to build this, you can see how what it's going to do is it's going to create that parking stripe standing up, which is not what we want. What we want is for this to be laying down because it needs to extrude flat along the path where our parking spaces are. So we're just going to come in here and we're just going to set our rotation to 90 degrees. And so if we were to select this assembly and click the button for um, apply or edit member properties, you could go in there and you could select the option for rotation, which we've changed and click apply. What that's going to do is that's going to apply that rotation to this profile. The other thing we want to do is we want to set the um, insertion point to probably bottom middle or we want to set the insertion point to probably center left. And so if you think about it, we rotated this 90 degrees. As far as this is concerned, um, center left is if this was standing up um, and we were looking at the left hand side of it, this would be the center of that. Um, but we just want to set this insertion point so that it's placed right in the middle of where we click when we're setting our parking lines. And so now that we've created this, I'm just going to minimize this for right now. And I'm going to go back into my assembly dialog. And so in my assembly dialog, what I need to do is I need to add a profile member. And so to add a profile member, you're just going to go over to this tab right here and you're going to click the plus button. And what that's going to do is that's going to look for a profile um, to add to your parking lines assembly. And so we're just going to do the same thing where we come in here and we just do a pick from model. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and click this one because what this was, was this was just a copy of this profile that we put in here. And you can see how because we set that um, to the center on that profile, it's already getting added in the right place. So now all we have to do is go in here and we just need to apply our assembly attributes. And you can see how what that's doing is that's actually coming in here and that's extruding your parking line based on the insertion point that we set along here. So now I can really easily add these parking lines just like that. So we can take that now that we've got it set up properly and let's make sure the ends are lining up right. It looks like they are. And um, it looks like everything's kind of working the way that it's supposed to be working. Well, now you can use this and you can save it to your library and you can use it to add these parking spaces really quickly. And there's some other things you should be aware of. Like for example, um, you've probably got one space in here that's a little bit different size than the others. Unless this run is exactly right, um, it's probably adding a little bit, it's probably taking up whatever the distance is in this end piece. Nope, it's averaging them. Okay, so that's one thing we want to be aware of because what this is doing right now is if you look at these spaces, and you measure them with the tape measure tool, 
they're actually at about eight foot one inches and if you remember we set these up to be nine foot parking spaces well the reason for that is what that's doing is that's coming in here and there's an option checked for for max and so what max is doing is that's actually averaging out um, the distance between these objects um, between your parking spaces well that's not necessarily what you want because that means it's making all of your parking spaces smaller by average and so what we want to do instead is we want to uncheck that box for max then we want to go in here and we want to apply our assembly attributes like this and so you can see how when it does that that actually changes the way these spaces are being placed in here um, so you can see how now what it's doing is it's taking up the extra space with a little space right here. And so we want to kind of do the same thing on the other component as well. Um, in the sense that for our second component, we also want to uncheck the box for max. And so what that means is that's going to come in and that's going to add an extra line right here, which may not necessarily be what you want. You have to figure out how you want to handle um, these in spaces or the extra space in here. Unless this, so you can either set this up to kind of average those parking spaces, which may or may not be the right approach. You might also want to set this up where you just don't place a component at the endpoint. So if you uncheck the box for the component at the endpoint, what that means is if there's not enough space for this extra component in here, um, it's just going to not add that. And you might have to make some adjustments to the way your profile member comes in here as well, like maybe add a setback or something like that if that's what you're going to do. It's just something you kind of have to think about how you're going to handle when you're creating parking spaces that have a fixed width. So that's where I'm going to end this video. I'm interested to see if this is going to work on my city model because it's not flat, but in either case, this is a really quick way to set this up to create parking spaces. Then you could save this assembly for access later. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.